Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Imagining God podcast. This is Tom Medwin Jr. here broadcasting from the Space Coast of Florida. And a big thank you to my recent guests, Jamie from New York, Alan from St. Vincent. What wonderful time we had hearing their testimonies, being inspired. I'm going to fly solo today, even though I do have a couple more guests lined up, which I'm very excited about more to come regarding that. But what I want to first say is, even though you're hearing testimonies from people that have experienced the promise, the promise is the unfoldment, the full revelation, the personal individualized experience of knowing that there is nothing but God and that God identifies himself as you. It is when the Holy Spirit seals himself upon your heart and your mind forever. And you know by direct knowledge from personal seeing, knowing, experiencing beyond all doubt that God is God and there is no other. And we are all the beautiful, perfect, individualized expressions of this infinite love who is God. All of us born of the one spirit, one body, one mind, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, we his members. And again, what I want to say is, it doesn't begin when you have that experience. You who are listening and the one who are telling the story are one and the same, albeit individualized and unique expressions of that one glorious being that is God. And it does make all the difference in the world to understand that it is God himself who is imagining and identifying himself as you. Not the other way around. It certainly is not little Tommy Medwin Jr. identifying as God, even though my identity is in Jesus Christ for sure. But it is God who identifies himself as you. It is God experiencing. It is the one mind that is the mind of Christ that is now having this experience that seems to be individualized as you. Does that make sense? In other words, be encouraged, my friends, that all will experience this phenomena called the promise, but it exists eternally true in the here and in the now. And that is the ministry of Jesus as recorded in the New Testament through the gospel writers who wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel that he preached was the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here and it is now and it culminated with the radical revelation, the secret of God, when he said, ye are gods, in quoting Psalm 82. Nevertheless, you will die like men. But he says, all of you are children of God. All of you are gods. Yet we know there is only one God and that is the Elohim, the compound unity, the one made up of the many. And yes, you, my friends, are the many who make up the one and the fullness of God dwells in you. That's Colossians chapter two. You are complete in him. So I want to mention that first off coming fresh out of these interviews to help you be encouraged that you are there now. All of God dwells in you now and you dwell in him. Heaven is within you. You're actually living from that place. And it is embodied as your body, but yet this physical body you see is just the shadow of it. So we're going to talk about that today, how even your body is the expression of God. Listen closely to these words. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First of all, to encourage your heart, verse 14, it says, God hath both raised up the Lord. Remember, every time you read the Lord, God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, it is the same being. His name forever and ever is I am. Just as Neville says, the sender and the sent are one. The Father and the Son are one. And on a psychological level, the Father is your own consciousness, your own awareness of being. That which you are conscious of being, the state wherein you dwell, your conception of yourself is the Son. All right, but remember, God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. So when you hear Jamie and Alan and myself and Neville and others speak of the promise or promise related experiences, even if they're adumbrations, dreams in the night, visions by day or night, revelation, direct knowledge, insight, whatever, you name it, 
It is the Lord's power who's doing it to himself to show you who you really are. That has always been that. You've always been the Elohim. You just happen to be suffering from a severe bout of forgetfulness, of amnesia. And so this is what the Holy Spirit does, is he brings to remembrance all the things that I have spoken to you, the great I am, Jesus, what he's spoken. And you'll begin to remember who you really are, know who you really are. But I just want to encourage you, in this verse, this is what Paul's talking about. He will also raise up us by his own power, and it's by his grace alone. There is no earthly merit. There is no striving. There's no moral goodness, no moral code, no diet, no set of beliefs. It has nothing to do with your ability as the son, as a human being. It is the grace and the goodness of God. We're going to have a, a guest who wrote a very a widely, a hugely popular book about grace. And so I'm really excited to have him on the show. Um, anyway, it goes on to say this. Listen, know you not that you're bodies are the members of Christ. Now, Paul's talking about the body, and it's actually the member of Christ. Remember, Paul's revelation is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So he understood that he was Christ. If it wasn't Paul living anymore, the person, the mask, is what it is in Greek, the persona, the mask that a play actor wears, well, then who is left? We understood it was Christ, that there was nothing but God. God being the writer of this play, the dreamer of this dream, the director of it, and yes, the actor of it. And that is you, the individualized expression, the son. Ye are all sons of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you will die like men. So this is part of the play, that God plays all of the parts. And what I want to encourage you in is that, yes, God is identifying himself as you individually as well as all of us collectively. Consider it. Know you not that your bodies are members of Christ? Read it in verse 15. If I take my, my finger and I sever it, it's, it's going to hurt. The rest of my body is going to be aware of it. It's going to suffer. It's going to die for lack of blood flowing through it. So we're told that we're saved by the blood of Christ. I'm a member of his body. His blood saves me. His blood, the lifeblood of man, is the life of God, is the consciousness of God, is the awareness of God, is the mind of God, is the spirit of God, is the light of God, and yes, is the body of God. God embodies himself. The, the mind is not complete. The imagination is not complete without its embodiment. And that embodiment is man Yes, universal, generic, eternal man, but also you individually. And so that's why Neville says when you die from this level without experiencing the promise, without accepting this gospel, you are immediately restored to life in another terrestrial world in a body just like this. Why? Because the imagination, the soul, the mind, the spirit is ever emanating itself in a body. It is embodied. But yet it is more than what I just see with my physical body, but it also includes it. It's called the member of Christ. Read it in here. And he goes on to say, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Now, I'm not going to get into Bible study too much today. Uh, we are going to have some episodes about that because I know that's of interest to a lot of you. Remember, Rahab is the harlot in the Bible. This is all graphic imagery, just as the bloody depiction of the crucifixion of Christ is very graphic so that it is indelibly impressed upon your mind that it cannot be forgotten and its revelation unfolds remember these are all personifications of you states of consciousness really aspects or modes or workings of your own consciousness so the harlot is that which i join myself to and i become it listen in the very next verse uh, he says this what know you not that that which is joined to a harlot is one body for two, he says, shall be one flesh. So this is the secret of imagining that God becomes that which he contemplates. On a higher level, God really never becomes anything because he's already complete. He already dwells in perfection. But here on this level of earth, it's a seeming experience of that individually as if it's for the first time. And so this is the secret of joining yourself to states the dissolution of old states and the creation or the experiencing of new ones. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. 
Well, there it is. Those of you that struggle from your religion that, uh, you know, that there are two that were separate from God. Again, Paul is telling you all throughout his letters that you are one spirit. There's one body, he says in Ephesians 4, 4. One spirit, one mind, one baptism. We are immersed in this living liquid ocean of light. A brother on um, Jamie's subreddit, which is called Neville the Promise, which I encourage you to check out if, if you have an interest in the promise, the more spiritual side of Neville, shared a dream that they had is a, in a recent post about the living ocean of light. And so you all will have this experience. You will know that there is nothing but God. And it is from this field of light that is the consciousness of God, that is that perfect living body of God, that it is pure love, God's kind of love, agape love, unfettered, untouched by anything of this level in this world. It is pure consciousness, pure love, pure joy. The prophet Zephaniah saw it. He said, the Lord, he rejoices over us with great joy. And you will feel it. This is the spirit of God. This is pure imagining, pure imagination. And it says that we are one spirit with him when we are joined to him. That word in Greek, joined, means to glue together, to adhere to. I had a dream where I had uh, uh, children. They were not my earthly children, but they were children of mine that I could not get away from. It was like I was rubber. My mind was like elastic. And these kids were like clung to me. And I knew these were my thought children. Uh, Bob Monroe, who wrote the book uh, Journeys Out of the Body, which those of you interested in astral projection, what the Bible calls traveling in the spirit. John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Uh, Philip was translated in the spirit from one location to another, which, by the way, if Lord willing, we do a part two with Jamie. She's going to talk about her open vision of Philip. So um, Philip is the one who wants to be shown the Father. And Jesus says, have I been so long with you, Philip? Do you not know when you see me, you've seen the Father? Again, the revelation is that the Father, who is consciousness, who is imagination, who is God, who is spirit, who is love, embodies himself as man. Not Jesus from Nazareth, but the Christ. Jesus the Christ, which is you. The Christ is God's conception of himself, and that's you, individualized. Because that's God. God's identifying himself as you. His fullness is in you. It's fabulous. All right. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. And he goes on to say this. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own? Well, there it is. I'm not little Tommy Medwin. Uh, you're not who you are. You're not your own. Paul says, no longer I who live, but it's Christ. You're not your own. And he makes it abundantly clear. Listen to verse 20. Glorious verse. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Do you get that? Your spirit is God's. Your body is God's. Well, if it's God, who is it? It's God. Just like my finger is me. You're members of Christ. You are the Christ. Ye are God's, Jesus says. It's fabulous. So that's why Jesus says, if anybody claims to be the Christ or look over here, there he is, don't believe him. Again, it's not man. It's not the conception identifying as God. It's God identifying himself as man. It's the greatest gift that he's given to existence and that is the gift of himself he gives himself and he's all love and he is all good and there exists in heaven nothing but good it's the onlyness of god every revelation in scripture has the worshipers of god bowing down they're yielded and submitted and they declare the lord is good and his mercy endures forever that's the revelation his nature is good Paul talks about the fruits of the Spirit, first of all, being love, joy, peace. You know the scripture, all of the good, patience, the long suffering, all of it. It's the nature of God. Well, he's given us that. It says it's we are partakers of the divine nature. The whole book, guys, is all about the oneness of God, the onlyness of God, the goodness of God. And he's experiencing himself as all that appears. Yes, even in the universe, all that is. It is impossible for you to behold anything other than your consciousness and the contents of it. And I'm telling you, God dwells on a level in heaven with his pure, un 
touched, perfect body, that there can be no sickness. It's impossible for him to know it. There's no sun, for he is its light, we are told. There's no lack. He is abundance, and he comes to give this life and life more abundant. And so I am going to get into a little question and answer today. Oh, somebody asked, what do I do if I can't visualize? It's okay. You can speak words, can't you? You can catch the mood, can't you? You can feel a feeling, can't you? That's the way that this law operates. So from that realm of living pure, endless, infinite light, it's infinite in that it's unending, but it's also in finite in the finite, in you individualized, in your world, in your bank account, in your physical body, in your relationships, you name it. From that living field of light, of love, of divine intelligence, of divine wisdom. Remember, he's the wisdom of God. The power of God is pure power. The power that created the universe and the worlds within worlds and all that is. That is the power of your imagination, folks. That is Christ in you. From that living field, that formlessness comes all form. From that living ocean arises all that is, all form, you, me, the flowers, the fields, all that you can imagine. It comes from him and it is him. It is members of his body. So what do you do if you can't visualize? First of all, I would say you can because God's given you these spiritual senses. These are spiritual senses. His body is not lacking. It is complete. And you run over, your cup runneth over. That same spirit is in you. Can you visualize the cup of coffee you had this morning? Can you visualize the other room uh, right now in your house that you're not currently sitting in? Sure you can. Paul says we see dimly now as through a mirror, but we shall see in full. And he talks about that in the light of beholding the glory of God. Well, the glory of God is God himself. You're going to behold God. And who beholds him? Well, the pure in heart, the pure in their subconscious, where it's cleared. It comes from that cleared tract of land. I'm a pure, transparent uh, consciousness that is able to see the kingdom of heaven that's at hand, that is within me. And let that same light, untouched, uh, shine through me. Neville says this, I give you a true vision. He says, I'm not speaking metaphorically. This is a true vision. If you want to awaken, imagine yourself under a waterfall. And that waterfall is flowing upon you and through you. And you are now in God's garden. He's given to every man a plot in the garden. And so my imagination is that pure power, that pure wisdom, that pure love, that pure spirit, that pure light. And it's flowing through me into my entire world. And I water everyone's garden, my wife, my kids, my friends, and yes, even my seeming enemies. Because there is no other. There is nothing but God. Do you see what I'm saying? When I look out upon my window, when I see the world, I am seeing the imagination of God expressing and manifesting itself individually, but also perfectly harmoniously. And heaven is perfect harmony. Even Neville tells you heaven is a body. It's not a realm. It is a body. It is the living body of God. And I'm telling you, it is right and it is good to accept that, that it is God identifying himself as you, that same heavenly body. It is yours, right? Somebody asked me about changing their appearance, something they don't like about their physical appearance. I said, well, imagine that heavenly body that you are. Imagine the most glorious, magnificent, beautiful being that you can fathom, that eternal being that's always existed. Watch this, because you're here in this earth experience, it's being enhanced. It's being expanded beyond your wildest dreams. And when you come out of it, you can't even imagine the being that you are. God is forever expanding himself and he's doing it as you. So I say, imagine that glorious light body that you are. Just close your eyes and ruminate upon it. Neville talks about the dark convolutions of the brain will suddenly grow luminous. You see, literal light will appear. Begin to dwell upon this light body that you are, this living ocean of light, and feel yourself to be it. Even the drop in the ocean is the fullness of that. Because God is not lacking, he's omnipresent, is he not? Well, that means he's in his fullness everywhere that he is. Omniscient, omnipotent, all power, all knowing, all wisdom, all good. And that is you, my friend, that is who you are, his expression, right? And I say his, but he's beyond the organization of sex, we're told. In Christ, there's neither Greek nor Jew, male nor female, slave nor free. He's beyond, he transcends that. 
It's on a whole other level. And so what I'm saying is that level is perfect. That level is heaven. That level is the body of God. So we glorify God, not glorifying a man or a person or persona. That's why look Christ over there. Don't believe him. No, there's only one Christ. There's only one God. There's only one spirit, one father, one baptism. And you're it because God's it. And there's nothing but him. All we have on this level are misidentifications because we've misidentified ourselves as somehow seemingly other. How can there be anything outside of God if we're told he's all and in all, right? So I'm telling you the end of all visual, if you can't visualize, I'll tell you what, catch the mood, catch the revelation, dwell upon it and the manifestation just happens because it's perfection. There can't be sickness, lack, loneliness, sadness, depression. There can't be anything other than the fullness of all that makes God, God, and you're it. So feel yourself to be absorbed into it. Paul says to be clothed with Christ. Well, in Greek, it's the word enduo, which means to sink into. Just let this earthly world dissolve away. Uh, and yet it is right here is the mystery. It's right here and now. You're not going someplace else. But my awareness now, my attention is on this kingdom of heaven that is within me, that is at hand. And when I look upon the world and the scenes of life and the other individuals, I'm seeing God expressed uniquely and wonderfully. Which, by the way, is my takeaway of experiencing promise-like symptoms. What, what Jamie and uh, Alan have experienced and others, when you come back to this level, you see nothing but God. You know there's nothing but God in the world. It's that one glorious being uniquely experiencing himself. And he's all love. He's all love. He's wildly, madly in love with you, which is himself. And so this is really about accepting love deeply. So it's one thing to let that waterfall, if you can imagine that waterfall going out, watering the world with the attention of love on every being that there is. And ultimately you are watering yourself and you can turn that around now and you accept that for yourself. My cup runneth over. He anoints my head with oil. My head is the place wherein he dwells, the fountainhead of creation. Amen. That's the, the rivers that flow out of Eden. And that's God himself. From your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And that's Christ. He said, I will be within you a fountain springing up into everlasting life. So imagine the waterfall for that uh, person that questions that I can't visualize. I would also say this too, work on all of your senses. Certainly you can speak, even if you're mute on the physical level, you speak uh, from your mind words continually. You can't stop the inner conversations. Right. Uh, a sister uh, made a comment on my first podcast uh, video on my YouTube channel, and she gave one of my favorite Neville quotes and said that the mind, sorry, the mouth of God is the mind of man. And those words that you speak, those thoughts, those inner conversations are God's words. They are forever taking on life, taking on flesh, the cause of the phenomena of life. So surely you can speak words within yourself. If you can't visualize it, remember, it's not about the technique, guys. You are catching the feeling. You are pressing upon the depth of your being. You are being joined to that harlot. You're becoming one flesh with your subconscious. Neville says it perfectly. The, the subconscious doesn't respond to that of a taskmaster. I no longer call you slaves. I call you friends, right? You're the lovers of God. It's like a more of a divine romance, a divine dance. And I am pressing upon the depth of my subconscious, that which I love. And I love it. I love my subconscious. I had a dream uh, this week, just a couple of nights ago, and I realized that I was dreaming. I was lucid dreaming. I'm aware that I'm in the dream. And I uh, just intuitively, uh, I, I didn't like the scene that I was in. I was in a classroom, which I'm in an awful lot in my dreams. Now, remember, everything in your dream is yourself. It's your subconscious. And we're, yet we're told that's where God speaks to man. He speaks in a vision of the night uh, while, while we slumber in deep sleep, right? He seals our commands upon us. Anyway, so I didn't like the scene in particular, and I just intuitively I started to spin around. As I began to spin like a top, I just span, I, I spun with a force, uh, like, felt like a centripetal force that was going to blow my, my being apart. And yet I was suddenly in the world when I was in the middle of this vortex, and everything just disappeared. It was in a pure, it was like a white, it wasn't exactly like a white light, it was more like some kind of a fog. Uh, but I was in this uh, vortex and I had to stop it because it literally felt like my top of my head was going like this. Like when you would see um, maybe like a whirlpool when, the, when your bathtub drains out. And I was in the center of it. And it was just I, I felt like I was going to 
go into oblivion. And in hindsight, I should have kept going because I probably would have ended up somewhere awesome. <laughs> but I, I got startled. I got scared. And so I kind of just thought, you know, that's your, your ego sometimes wanting to just preserve itself. And so I stopped and I was like, and I just knew that I could change the scene. I can control my dream perfectly. I can control the experience I was having. And I began to imagine uh, somewhere that I wanted to be. And I stopped realizing I was exactly where I wanted to be. I was aware of nothing else but the spirit of God. It was just like the Holy Spirit and me. And I was in the vortex. I was in the middle. And I was like, where else do I want to go? And I just began to quietly just surrender and just exalt the Lord. Just like we read, exalt God in your spirit and in your body. This was before this verse came on my heart, by the way. It's probably where it came from, inspired by that moment. And I was just worshiping. I began to just extend my hands, right? It says when you pray, lift your hand, holy hands to heaven. And I began to see my hands in the spirit there. In my, I have a body. And I began to just exalt and revel and just rejoice in my divine lover. It's a divine love. And I was just enjoying that for who knows how long. And eventually I did fall back into a dream state later. But man, I woke up just thrilled, like, wow, just so rejuvenated, so alive. So um, what am I trying to say? It's all about catching the feeling, guys. It's not about the technique. It's about the Lord and exalting him in the midst of you. Exalt him in your spirit, which is your imagination, right? So raise that to the level of God and know that as you imagine, you can speak these words of life. Your mind is God's mouth. And if you want to know the state we're in, you're really, if, you're, if you're confused about the uh, phenomena of your life, you're not liking the people, the experiences, the circumstances of life, I'm telling you they are dictated by the state wherein you dwell. And if you really want to know the state you're in, Neville says it perfectly, the state to which you return most naturally when you're not trying is the state that constitutes where you dwell. If you want an experience or a, an experiment, Take the next 60 seconds, pause the video, pause this podcast, wherever you're listening to it or watching it, and then take 60 seconds to try to quiet your mind and not think a single thought, to shut off the internal dialogue. Go ahead and take a moment to do that. Do it when you're falling asleep at night and just begin to observe, first of all, how difficult that is, and then observe the words that come out without your effort. I fall asleep sometimes at night and I find myself uh, slipping into a dream that I don't want to have. It's like my thought loops or my, some of my frustrations begin to play themselves out or just sometimes they're just totally random. So they're, they're, sometimes they're completely unlovely. And I'm like, man, where is that coming from? Well, it's coming from the depth of my being. It's coming from my subconscious. Now watch, there's therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So don't con condemn yourself about it. There's no shame in him, right? You're bought with a price. You belong to him. Just simply observe somewhere along the line, wittingly or unwittingly, I fell into a state. And just observe that you, you have these little inner grumblings, complainings, whisperings, and observe. And if you don't like it, somebody asks the question, how do you weed those things? How do you weed your garden? Well, I just observe that thought. I, I take it captive. So Paul says, take your thoughts captive or to cast down vain imaginations. These are the principalities, the powers, uh, the grumblings, the complainings, the thoughts. I, I just grab a hold of it. Let, take every thought captive, we're told, and I bring it to the obedience of Christ. Well, is Christ perfect? You better believe he is. Is he altogether lovely? You better believe he is. Is he without spot blemish? You better believe he, he's, uh, he, we're the bride of Christ, folks. You're not going to wear a wedding dress that is, uh, has stains on it, that's ripped or that's tattered. So identify now yourself as Christ who is perfect. I take that thought captive and I bring it to the obedience of Christ. I submit it now to that body that's perfect, to that mind that's perfect, that body that's healthy, that's whole, that relationship that's loving, that's harmonious, that's full of life, overflowing, whatever. You just name it abundance, right? Uh, it's without lack. You just name the thing. And so how do I weed my garden? I recognize that there's a weed growing and a lovely thought. The cares of the world, we're told in the parable of the sower, uh, the, the, the weeds that choke out the fruitfulness, the fruitful harvest are the cares of life. They're the fears of life. Uh, Satan is called the God of this world because all I can see is the opacity of materialism. I can't see past my physical matter, my physical circumstances. I seem limited. It's not a devil out there. It's literally being trapped. He's the God of this world because all I can see is being moved about by materiality, trying to pull strings with this person, that person, make things hap happen, struggle, striving. I'm fearing, I'm concerned. I have the cares of this world. Well, that's the stuff that chokes out my ability to see the full harvest of the unlimited harvest. The fields are white. 
under harvest, unlimited potentiality, that living field of light. Uh, I, I saw it as a golden light, but it's a pure white light because all the colors of the spectrum come out of uh, that, pure, uh, that pure white light. Right. All my Pink Floyd fans out there, dark side of the moon, you know, the imagery of the light coming into the prism and the rainbow comes out. So all comes out of this field of light. So that's how you weed your garden. Number one is I recognize it. I take it, I bring it into captivity and then I dissolve it into that field of light. And I now become aware of God identifying himself as me. I'm his member. I'm his body. Right. I'm his abundance. I have overflow. I have sustenance. Think of yourself in heaven like you probably would have as a kid. And you first heard about mansions in heaven. Well, how did you get them? They're just yours. You didn't struggle for them. They're given to you by grace. Uh, in my father's house are many mansions, many dwelling places. And yes, this has levels of meaning on, on many different levels. So what I do now is I crowd out those weeds with thoughts of abundance, with thoughts of health, with thoughts of life. Right? I'm identifying myself with the oneness of God, the onlyness of God, the beauty of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. You have questions in your life, concerns, things you need answers to, things that are important to you. It's right and good, and good uh, to have those answers. Take them into the depth of your subconscious as you fall asleep. All right. It's about turning to that being within who is the Holy Spirit, not taking a single word uh, from anybody else for what they have to say. Certainly not myself, not your pastor, not your not uh, not anybody, uh, not some spiritual teacher. The Holy Spirit who knows all and is in you as you. That's it. God is imagining. Listen, Paul calls him all in all. He is all as all. And think of yourself, identify yourself as that. Be joined to the Lord, be glued together. He that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. Amen. So now I'm planting lovely seeds. I'm watering them now with that waterfall, that water hose of divine love, divine attention, divine awareness. I'm aware of nothing but that. Now I'm watering my field. I'm watering my neighbor's field, which is watering myself, which is watering. I'm identifying now with that living body of God. Do you see what I'm saying? That's how you weed your garden, by crowding it out and uh, tending it and cultivating it. That's your mind. And the promise is to be fruitful and multiply. It's a promise given to Abraham. As far as your eye can see in every direction, that's what I'm giving to you. It's your inheritance. As numberless as the stars in the sky, as the grains of sand, is your inheritance. That's your unending journey in the infinite, being finite and yet enjoying the infinite expression, discovery of all that's within divine imagination. It's the glory of being the son. And yet it's the father sending himself as that individualized. Do you get it? Dwell upon it. I'm telling you, rejoice in it. That's why Neville ends every lecture with let's go into the silence. The silence is that allness of God. And that's the ultimate act of worship. It's that surrendering. That worship in the old uh, in, in Hebrew is, is literally means to bow down. It's like I'm just bowing down to this awesomeness, this allness, this wonder of God. I'm exalting God not the individualized person. Do you get it? All right, I hope that helps. So speak those words. The, the, the mind of God is the mouth of, uh, the mouth of God is the mind of man. So speak words. If, you, if, the, if your main sense uh, isn't uh, vision, that's okay, it'll come. Begin to speak words of life. Speak them. It's like building a nest. It's like building an ark. Noah building the ark. Words uh, are built one upon another, line upon line, precept upon precept. And, and uh, in the story, he built the ark for uh, decades, if I recall, something like 90, 100 years. Well, these, this all has uh, a symbolic meaning, which I don't, can't get into because I don't have it in front of me. I'd have to look it up in the Hebrew. Anybody can do it. Uh, but uh, my point is that it's these words that build an ark that will carry you when the floods come. Well, the flood came to... Uh, drown out all of the unrighteousness that's in the earth. Well, you are the earth. You have un unrighteousness, things that, are, that, that aren't harmonious with that consciousness of God, which is righteousness, right standing, a uh, right consciousness. Well, uh, the floods come, and sometimes, yes, the floods are the challenges of life. But really, the water always speaks of that symbolic um, symbolism of the, the uh, psychological truth. And so I'm now uh, the, I'm speaking words which build an ark that carry me through the floods, into a new world, into a world of uh, now where righteousness flourishes. The old world is done away with. And so these are all speaking again on these different levels. So I hope that helps the one that says they can't visualize begin to speak the word of life. Amen.
All right, somebody else asked me about how I teach my kids. Again, look within yourself. Uh, you'll know the right answer intuitively on how to teach kids. I teach each of my, I have three kids. I teach them the same stuff, but individually in a way that I think they would best experience it. I, I gave them just this last week, that waterfall imagery. And uh, I encourage them to use that in their own way. Uh, they, uh, I got my um, um, Kylie, who most of you know from the appendix story, I got her a bunny for her birthday and the bunny is now shedding. And so the kids are having these allergy reactions. And so my youngest daughter, Sadie, uh, who's my spunky one, this kid is just so full of energy, it's hard to get her to bed at night. And uh, she calms down. Then when I begin to meditate with her, and I had her, I said, Sadie, begin to imagine this waterfall of just pure light, pure life is just washing over you and it's just washing away all of your allergies. She had the sniffles and a sore throat from the post nasal drip and a wheeze, all this stuff. And um, I said, just imagine this pure waterfall just washing over you. She began to get silent. She began to twitch a little bit. She's imagining with me, right? I just perceived just like the divine life, divine energy of the Spirit of God energizing her cells, her physical cells, her body. And uh, I just left her and I let her drift off, you know, uh, that way. Well, the next day she was so excited. She goes, Dad, and she began to tell me about a dream. She goes, I saw the waterfall. She says, I was standing on top of the waterfall and there was this rainbow over it and the sun was there upon it. And she says, the, the birds were flying. She began to describe like this Garden of Eden scene. And she goes, and then we were all there. She's talking about our family. And we all jumped off together <laughs> into the waterfall, is what she said. And she, be, she began to describe this incredible scene in a way that I didn't think of it at all. In her own unique way, she began to experience it. And um, from that moment, it took two or three days to completely knock out the symptoms. But now she's feeling great. They have a little bit of the last of that cough, you know, and they're clearing out their lungs. But, uh, man, she had a brightness on her countenance. And that's what I'm talking about. That's your spirit. That's your soul that begins to shine and emanate through this body. And that's what's actually manifesting as this body. And again, you could take this body from me. It'll be instantly restored elsewhere because God is forever embodying himself. Do you get it? Your body is God's. So how do I teach my kids? I teach them to imagine. I teach them that they are the unique expression of God himself. And even though we see it dimly as through a mirror now, they're going to see it in full. They're going to experience it in full. And so I tell them, especially fall asleep every night on purpose. Never go to bed angry. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Always go to bed in a state uh, as if you were going to experience the results of that state the next day. Fall asleep as if all of your thoughts, your imaginings, your feelings, your moods are seeds you're planting into your field. And you're going to encounter them tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. So select wisely. That's what I teach them. I, I teach them this law. And I teach them the promise, the fullness of God who's all in all and all as all. Amen. All right. So I hope that answers that one. Uh, what else does somebody ask? Somebody asked me about my logo. I just, I wanted to think of a cool logo, honestly, for my channel. So the eye to me, Neville always talks about bring before your mind's eye. And so the eye speaks a lot of things uh, to me personally. And as a symbol should, it should speak something individually to you. Really, it's going to reflect back to you exactly what you should see. But to me, it was the eye that speaks of imagination, the awakened eye. The pupil is the shape of a heart because God is all love. The man is in the middle of it because we're the apple of his eye. When God imagines himself, it's man. Let's make man in our image and after our likeness. And so the beams of light, you know, our God, God is light, speaks of extending into infinity. That which is within is without. It speaks a lot to me. So, and uh, I guess that, that sufficed. Uh, but somebody said, well, I've seen something similar somewhere else and it was evil. I'm like... I know people think of the evil eye or the conspiracy theory about the eye that's on our dollar bills here in the U.S. on the top of the pyramid. Guys, it's all symbolism. None of it's evil. It's all what you make it. To me, it's the allness of God that is the foundation of uh, our country, which I love. I love the United States of America. Uh, Neville says it perfectly. He says that um, they believed it in, talking about our forefathers. They actually believed, they imagined this and they believed it into being. And I don't have time to get into all that right now, but it's all wonderful. By the way, I also created our uh, uh, intro music is a, a little just tooling around in my studio, something I came up with. And I'm really excited to release original music to you. It's probably not in the immediate future just because of the responsibilities of life. I mean, I can't even pump out these podcasts as much as I would love to just because, you know, I do get busy with life and stuff and things and, you know, work. I would love this to be my work. So if somebody's a, a billionaire out there and you'd like to pay my salary to do this full time, 
I'd love to talk to you because <laughs> this is my passion. I would love this to be my expression. But in the meantime, I do sell real estate. Anybody who knows what that's like knows it's consuming. I'm always on the clock. And so I just have the challenge of, you know, dealing with that. And at the same time, I'm learning to walk by grace, right? So as the, the window of time uh, and energy presents itself, I'm going to put out these podcasts as much as I can. And ultimately music, because uh, to me, music is a uh, expression that I deeply, deeply love. And I'm excited to uh, show you some stuff that's been in my imagination and in my heart. And I'm going to I'm going to bring it out ultimately. So I am excited for that. All right. Let me make sure I'm not forgetting some other. I know there's other questions some of you have had. Um, that'll have to do for now because our time is getting long. So I don't want to go much longer than this. But keep the questions coming. I hope some of you chime in uh, on my YouTube channel. If you're listening by podcast somewhere out there in the in the world, uh, you can visit my YouTube channel, Awaken Your Imagination. I will try to circle back to comments on there as I'm able. I'm, I'm sorry that it's not as timely as I would like to, but uh, maybe others of you in the community can uh, chime in on there. Visit uh, Jamie's subreddit, uh, Neville the Promise, you know, and uh, she's been active on there. And she, I'm sure she can answer some questions. I'm going to try to have her on here for a part two. Uh, same with Alan, same with some other guests that I have. Uh, lined up already, but, uh, which I'm excited for, including a brother uh, who lives local, somewhat local to me. I'm going to do my first in-person interview uh, with two of us sitting here together in person. So that's going to be lots of fun. Uh, look forward to that coming from my brother, Nico, who's right up the road in uh, Cocoa, Port St. John. So that's going to be great. Anyway, I think I've said enough for this episode. I love you guys. Think upon the things that I'm telling you. Read Neville for yourself, as always. Read the Bible for yourself, as always. And turn within to that glorious spirit, that glorious mind that is your spirit, that is the Holy Spirit. Dwell upon him who is all in all and all as all, including you, my friend, individualized. You are perfect. You are blameless in his sight, we are told. You are altogether lovely. And I love you. I do. So no, you got somebody else in the world that loves you. And my God, more than anything, begin to accept that for yourself because there is no other. Accept that love deeply for yourself. In fact, let's just do this. I'm going to do something a little bit different to end the show. I want you to just go ahead and close your eyes. So your attention isn't on me, the individualized expression, Tom. No, but on the depth of your own being right now. And I want you to just begin to just calm that mind. Begin to calm yourself. I want you to see that mind as that infinite ocean of light and, I, and, and see yourself in the depth of it right now. Not the surface level where we get tossed to and fro by the things that are in this material world, but see that perfect calm center, undisturbed. And I want you to know that to be yourself, that place where the peace of God passes all understanding, his peace, your peace. Identify with it. Absorb it now. His love, your love. There's only one love, his light, your light. Feel yourself to be that perfect eternal body that's always been unbegotten of the Father, uncreated. It's always been, it will always be. It wasn't born, it won't die. Those are all misidentifications. Those are all temporal experiences. Your true self, feel yourself to be that glorious body of Christ. You, his member, and yet you in his fullness. Feel that fullness, overflowing, abundant, magnificent. That's how you glorify him. It's what I was doing in my dream, dwelling within my, the depth of my own being in the whirlwind. Just nothing but God. Feel it. You're baptized in it. Like the fish is in the ocean. It doesn't know it's surrounded by nothing but water until you take it out of the water. And yet this is you in the consciousness of God, your consciousness. Let this mind be in you, which was also in him who didn't consider a robbery to be considered equal with God. Well, fill your mind to be that one mind. There's nothing but that mind. There's nothing but that consciousness. There's nothing but that imagination. And that's who you are. And yet you can't be the fish taken out of the ocean. Your experiences here will seemingly give you that experience so that you can know Ultimately, you've only ever been in him. You've only ever been immersed in his living love. And I want you to feel it now. And every time that you think, every time that you feel, every time that you carry a mood, every time that you imagine, which you can't stop doing it, you are creating ripples on that surface. And that, my friends, is your plot in the garden. And so I want you to feel yourself now emanating and dropping seeds and ponds into that ripple that extend into infinity that are good. 
that you're sowing goodness into this field of living light. And yes, that is what we are all collectively experiencing, seemingly individualized on this level called earth. But let's emit into it beautifully that which is in alignment with perfect love, harmonized with the mind of God, the body of God, the love of God. Can you feel it? Come on, can you feel it? Even as I speak these words, covering the earth. I'm, I'm so glad that this podcast is reaching the uttermost parts of the earth. When I close my eyes, I see the earth like a marble, and it's just these words of life that I'm speaking to you, they're going all around the earth. Neville's words are reaching all around the earth. Paul's words, God's words, Christ's words, it's all the same reaching around the earth. Can you feel it harmonizing it now? Can you see our earth just glorious? Can you see it perfect? Can you see it beautiful? The garden sown. Can God sow anything other than perfection? That's what it is. Come on, crowd out the weeds of COVID. Crowd out the weeds of despair, the, the weeds of violence, you name it. It doesn't exist in God's kingdom. Can you see that eternal kingdom, that eternal earth, the new heaven, the new earth sown in glory, sown in perfection? vibrating with life, vibrating with love. There's no sun. It's just Christ is its light. It's all and in all. It's faith vibrating through everything, giving life to all. And then when you come back to this level, you feel yourself included in it. This is the outbreathing of God and the inbreathing. The limit of contraction, which is man, which is the facts of this life. That's what stones are. You know, it's like the limit of contraction. And yet it expands back again into infinity. And all of it's perfect, guys. Just feel the perfection that is God identified as you, as your loved ones, as everything you love in your world. It's where the power of the operation of the law comes from. And yet Jesus Christ is the end of the law for them that believe. That's Romans 10.1. Can you feel it right now? It's the end of the law. You're not under the wheel of karma. You're not under the law of sin and death. You're not under the endless, uh, I'm forever plagued by what I imagine. No, I'm blessed by what I imagine because Christ is the end. Christ is the fullness. Christ is the completion. He's the perfection. He is that pure love, pure consciousness, pure imagination. And it is good and his mercy endures forever. So I hope you feel that today, my friends. I hope you're blessed by that. I hope that is the stream in which you row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. (laughs) Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. So dream it well, my friends. Imagine well. I love you so much. I'll see you next time right here on the Imagining God podcast. And if this blessed you, go share it. Will you go share the podcast with somebody? And if you watch this long, I did uh, promise my brother Alan I was going to give away five of his books. I got swept away with my timeline. In fact, nobody followed up with doing my instructions to uh, qualify for that. So I want to say this. If you would like Alan's book, uh, you can comment on this video on my YouTube channel on Awaken Your Imagination. The first five commenters that say I would love a copy of Alan's book, I'm going to give it to you. Okay, so just reference Alan and his book. and I'm going to send that to you. Okay, all right. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.